Praise the Lord and welcome to this edition of the series uh, of our series of daily broadcasts which we have tagged the state of the union. The union that is between Jesus and his bride, the church. We are still about the business of the word of the Lord saying, tell my people to return to me. Tell my people to return to me. And welcome again. Now, we have been looking at fruit bearing and now more specifically the role of the word of God in fruit bearing. Jesus said if you abide in me and my words abide in you you shall ask what you will and it will be done unto you and herein will my father be glorified in that you bear much fruit John 15 7 and 8 so fruit bearing is hinged perhaps on two things being in Christ and letting his word abide in us or if you like operating by his word operating by his word allowing the word of God to be the sole determinant of whatever we do or we become whatever we think whatever we say Jesus said whatever you hear me say they are as my father first taught me for I can do nothing of myself as I hear I judge so we know that Jesus operated solely according to the word of his father so it's got to be by the word so when we say God says tell my people to return to me although we understand that there are different dimensions of expression of that word and we have been looking at different since inception we have been looking at different possibilities on how we may have missed it how we may have turned or walked away from God or how we might have failed in continuing following after him we do appreciate that at the end of the day it is by the word of God so in returning to him we will be returning to him in whatever dimension that the word of God operates in our life so yesterday in yesterday's edition of this series of broadcasts we saw that in the call of Abraham or in the calling of Abraham God said to him, come out of your country, come out from among your people, come out from your father's house, unto a land that I will show you. And in that, we saw two dimensions of oppression, or of possibility, with the word of God. First, it was an invitation to a relationship a covenant relationship Abraham was to come out of his father's house and then God would lead the way to the land in question that's a relationship God has his part the man had his part 
But that was not the only dimension of expression in that calling, an invitation to a covenant relationship. It was also an invitation to fruit bearing. Just like Jesus said, if you continue in me, so shall you be my disciples indeed. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, whatever you say will be granted you. And this is how you will bear fruit and glorify the Father. So yesterday we saw different examples of how the word at the same time can offer us an invitation to relationship or an invitation to fruit bearing. Today, in saying, tell my people to return to me, we offer another dimension of oppression of the word of God, in that by the word, we get to experience or navigate different possibilities of existence with God. Hence, he says, return. This is where the action is. It is by my word. So we call it navigating by the word. Navigating the realms of the kingdom of God. The realms of possibilities in the spirit but by the word of God and nothing else. I have to say and nothing else because there are other possibilities. We can navigate by the dictates of the spirit of this world, by the prince of this world, by the rulers of the darkness that is in this world, by the cause of this world that is allowing the world to determine what we do. In whatever direction the world seems to be going, we just flow along. And we can also allow our flesh to determine what we do. So we saw yesterday from Romans chapter 8 verse 13, if you live by the flesh, you shall die. But if you by the spirit mortify the desires of the flesh, you will live. Now, if you are joining us for the first time, I can only counsel that you avail yourself of the recorded versions of this series of broadcasts. They are running into hundreds now. I imagine after 17 months, well, 19 months, in about a week it will be 19 months, after 19 months, we are certainly now approaching 500 recorded editions of this series of broadcasts. So there is a lot to catch up on. But today, navigating by the word. Now we understand as Christians, and I'm talking to the body of Christ, I'm talking to God's people, the body of Christ, Christians, believers. We know from the scriptures that we are in Christ. But can I ask a question? How did you become a Christian? It's a simple enough question and it has a simple and similarly simple answer. But in the simplicity of that answer is a revelation of how to navigate in the kingdom. How did you become born again? The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, it says, with the heart we believe and with the mouth we make confession that Jesus is Lord and we are saved. In other words, we became Christians by hearing a message, believing, receiving it, 
and confessing according to the same out of our mouths. That's how we got saved. That's how all the things written in the New Testament epistles came to be. He says now, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He says, if any man has been baptized into Christ, he has been baptized into the death and therefore the resurrection of Christ. So that as Christ has died, we too are considered, we should consider ourselves dead to sin. And as Christ has been raised back to life, we too shall exist in newness of life. All because we have come into Christ. We are now in him. We now exist and have our lives in him. Paul said, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. So in Christ, which is what we call being a Christian, in Christ, we come into the dimension of Christ. So that our life approximates unto that which is Christ. So whatever is said of Christ is now true of us according to the scriptures. Now if we read the epistles in particular and even whatever is written concerning the man Jesus in the gospel books, everything that is true of Jesus the Christ by reason of our being in him now becomes true of us. I've made two major statements. One, we became Christians by believing and confessing out of our mouths that which we heard of the gospel of Christ for salvation. And then the second one, being that we have come into him by reason of that confession, we now take on his life. The old man, the old person we were, died with him at his cross. And a new person has been brought into existence in him. And the life of that new person is the life of Christ. So he says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He has not existed before. All things are passed away. And all things, old things are passed away and all things have become new. Now you see, all these statements are statements of the word of God. And we tend to believe them. We are supposed to believe them. We should believe them. Not just believing them, we are supposed to operate according to those words. We are now new creature. We have not existed before. In fact, he says we do not yet know what we will be, but when he appears, we will be as he is. We will be recognizable in him. Now, here's the issue. If we started being in him by being born again in hearing a message and then confessing according to the same out of our mouths. If, if we agree that that is how we started, there is a position of scripture in Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 that we must pay attention to. It says, As you have so learned Christ, so continue in him you can look it up yourself in the manner that you have received Christ that is how you are to continue in him so the question is how did you receive Christ somebody preached the word of Christ to you the word of salvation for example you believed it you received it and you spoke it out of your mouth 
That's how we came to Christ. Now, Colossians 2, 6 says, that is the same way that we are to continue, or like Jesus said in John 15, to abide in him. That is how we are to continue. That is how we are to abide in him. Now, since we started by hearing a word and then confessing according to that word, he said, abide in me and my words abide in you. So every step of the way, our experience will be determined by the word of God that we receive, believe, and confess out of our mouths, acting according to to it, allowing that word to determine what we do. Now Jesus said, this is how we bear fruit. This is how we are to bear fruit that we glorify the Father, operating by his word. Hear the word, make the word your own, begin to talk according to the word, begin to act according to the word. But not just that. The word of God determines what we are or what we become or what is possible. So as we receive the word, we become what the word says. And so what the word says necessarily becomes our hope, expectation, and therefore experience if we hang on to the word. Now, for many of us, we have already stopped expecting or stopped operating by the word for which God is saying return. But we generally become based on the word that we receive. Now, there are two examples, two particular examples. There are several all over the place. Every time Jesus was going to do something, what did he do? He spoke. And events became. People received experience based on what Jesus said, based on how they res responded or received what Jesus said. So in 1 Samuel chapter 1, about verse 17 or thereabouts, Hannah, the mother of Samuel, is praying out of anguish of heart. And the priest of God, Eli, is watching her. He thinks she's drunk because she's moving her lips and no words are coming out. And so he starts to rebuke her for being drunk and she says, no, I'm not drunk. I'm just praying out of the anguish of my heart. And then Eli says, may God grant you according to the petitions which you have presented. That's the word of the Lord. It's coming from the mouth of a priest. Now, this is Hannah's response. She says something to the effect, may the grace of God find expression in me. She said, let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. Now that's what she said. We know the rest of the story. She conceived and gave birth to Samuel. But there is another woman who had a similar response to the word of God. I'm talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. So the angel says to her, you are going to conceive and give birth to a child whom you will name such and such. And she says, how shall this be, seeing that I know not a man? And the angel replies to her, the Spirit of God will overshadow you. And what does the woman say? Be it unto me according to thy word. How did these two women know to respond like that? How come the rest of us, Christians today, don't know to respond to the word of God like that? To receive the word of God and allow it to determine our experience whatever the word says that's who or what we are whatever the word says is our experience that's what our experience is going to be 
let the word of God find expression in us. So, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, the Bible says certain things, and we need to pay attention. Referring to Christ, he says, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, he says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. In other words, in Christ, we come into righteousness. In Christ, we come into sanctification. In Christ, we come into redemption. What does that mean? The word of God says that I have been made righteous by being in Christ. I have been sanctified by being in Christ. I have been redeemed by being in Christ. That's what the word says. And therefore, that is the position of my heart. That is the position your heart ought to operate by. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The word of God says, all things are passed away, all things are passed away and all things have become new. That's the position of the word of God. Then that's exactly what we are. The word of God says that it pleased God that all fullness dwell in Jesus. We are now in him. Therefore, it pleased God that all fullness should dwell in us. The problem is we don't know that. So we continue to violate Matthew chapter 6 verse 25. Seeking after the things of this life. What we will eat, what we will drink, what we will put on. Because we don't know that in Christ we have the fullness we have all things Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27 Jesus said all things are delivered unto my hand by my father if we are in him then all things are delivered unto us by my father it's a simple matter now let us reason together on this on this and then we will bring this matter to a close the scripture says that we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light in Jesus Christ First Peter chapter 2 about verse 9 8, 9, 10 we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light that is in Christ Jesus now the question is did you notice any physical activity in the name of such a translation of course the answer is no if anything what we experience is the darkness in this world all around us but the bible says we have been translated if the word of god says we have been translated then we have been translated and that is the state in which god sees us we have been translated problem do you see yourself as having been translated into the light by christ jesus because the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that we that are in Christ are not of the flesh. We are of the spirit. If we are not of the flesh, how come the flesh is able to threaten our experience by luring us to do this and that? Why does the Bible warn not to operate by the flesh? if it is not possible to operate by the flesh 
Yet the same scripture says we are not of the flesh. We are not debtors to the flesh. The reason is because we have not made the position of the word of God the position of our thinking and our believing and our confessing. We made the position of the word of God our thinking and our believing and our confessing when we said, Lord Jesus, come into my life, I want to be born again. You know what I mean? So the Bible says in Colossians 2, 6, if you started like that, then that's how you are to continue. In other words, we are to find out every position of the word of God concerning every dimension of experience that is possible. And then make the, that position of the word of God our position. And that is what we are to declare. So if the Bible says that by the stripes of Jesus we were healed, then every time your body begins to feel somehow, your declaration should be, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And if you are healed, why bother to say I am sick? So God is asking us to return to the dimensions of experience possible in his word. Now Jesus said to his disciples, and he's saying to us even now, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. How is it given? By his word. So here is one mystery. We become whatever the word says that we are. We become by confessing sin about ourselves. That's how we became born again. That's how we are to continue in whatever dimension of experience that we are supposed to have. So he says all things have been given for life and godliness. Then all things have been given for life and godliness. Simple. Now Jesus said, if you pursue that which God says to pursue, all these things that the Gentiles run after will be added unto you. So if that is true, why don't you begin to speak according to the word of God, thereby pursuing his righteousness and his kingdom, and then watch God add all these things unto you according to his word. If the word determines our experience, then we should be seeking out the word to operate by it. We should be seeking out the word to believe it, to think on it, to make it the meditation of our heart, to make it that which comes out of our mouth, so that that which we say becomes what we experience by the word of God. Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word. We navigate or exist in the kingdom by reason of the word that we receive or the word that we are given. He said, no one can receive this thing except it be given him. And it is given by the word. It is given in the word. So when God says, tell my people to return, or Jesus says, abide in me and my word abide in you, let us understand. Every dimension of experience and existence in the kingdom, especially as pertaining now to the business of fruit bearing, is going to be by his word. Let us return. Let us return. Imagine what we may have already lost by way of experience, that is, because it is still available in the world. But imagine what we have already lost by way of experience because we refused to continue in his word. And then imagine the threat where he says, every branch in me that beareth not forth fruit, my father takes away and it is gathered up and burnt. Imagine the risk that we are taking by not operating according to the word. Now God says return. Return to this dimension of existence and experience where God's word determines our existence. And here we must bring this particular edition of this series of broadcasts to a close. Hanging on the word of God be it unto me according to his word seek out the word 
make the word your own make the word of god your word believe in the word that you speak out of your mouth and jesus said you shall have what you say god bless you we'll be back at it again tomorrow same time until then seek out the word and make it your own in the name of jesus